Hi, Art Seekers. We're here with John Park. I am a super fan. So excited to get to talk to you and see some of your work behind us. Great to be here. So I know that you started out with fine art training, and I'm really interested in how you transitioned from the fine art world into the world of the street. I mean, the big thing was just moving to LA. So um, I got a degree at RISD uh, in illustration in 96, and then I moved out here the, uh, uh, a year later in 97. And that's really when, like, Juxtapost magazine was getting really big, and um, people were being introduced to, at the time, it was pop surrealism. And it just had a huge effect on me because I suddenly realized that, um, you know, I had always thought that classical art was kind of the end-all, be-all of art. Because, you know, I think that in many ways it's technically the most difficult style of art to do. And I kind of equated technical difficulty with um, merit. And then once I got out here and I started seeing all the amazing graffiti and, you know, all of the kind of, at the time it was pop surrealism um, that was happening, that incorporated a lot of the same classical techniques but did it in ways that were uh, very inventive and much more modern and actually just spoke to me much more. So it, I realized I had to rearrange how I did things. One of the biggest things is I stopped using photo reference. So that was a, a huge thing or reference of any kind. Um, I decided to just try and create imagery out of my own head um, and that forced me to get away from all of the classical techniques that I had studied when I was in college and then I really just started trying to incorporate all of my natural influences. I love anime, I love movies, um, I love graffiti so it was like um, just naturally being able to incorporate those kind of things into my work seemed like not only uh, a good next step but it also was fun. Have you only worked in mural format, or do you also do wheat paste or aerosol work? No, it's, it's been all, in terms of the, uh, the stuff I do on the street, it's all murals, and it's all done with brushes. Um, I don't use aerosol, um, not because I don't like it, it's because I uh, spent a lot of time playing video games when I was younger, <laughs> and I kind of destroyed my flexor tendon on my index <laughs> finger, so I can't, I can't use an aerosol Is that can. literally why you don't yeah, use aerosol? Yeah. It's, I, if, I, if I use an aerosol can for more than an hour, then I can't like use my right hand. As for the subject matter of your work, how do you pick it? Um, you know, I like to sneak in my personal politics. You know, I definitely am sort of neck deep in a lot of lefty politics right now. I kind of understand where this whole populist movement is growing from. And uh, I also understand that a lot of art galleries don't want to see political work <clears throat> because it's polarizing mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> so I, I realized that I had to kind of sneak it in and so I like to come up with imagery that appears neutral but then once I start explaining it then you begin to see that it's actually chocked full of crazy politics Interesting. <laughs> like the, the flying and, well the flying and falling piece is a perfect example of that one <clears throat> because you know it looks like a couple who are you know flying through the air like a Peter Pan type of thing um, but, you know, I, I <clears throat> wanted to depict the figures in such a way that if you looked at it in a different way, you, they might be falling. Mm -hmm. And so the idea was um, that right now, everything's sort of up in the air. Um, you know, the uh, American political system is sort of, we're on a fulcrum right now. The whole idea of having an image of people who could be soaring in the sky or could be plummeting to the ground. Um, I think is a very appropriate one. And it's, it's also a very uh, message neutral one because if I'm not around to explain that, then you're not gonna think that's some kind of polarizing political message. And, um, and I just, I, I kind of get a kick out of being able to sneak politics to people that may not want that in their art. I've always seen some kind of personal trace in your work. Well, what I assume is personal with your female figures who have three eyes, for instance. Mm -hmm. Does that come from some kind of personal place? It, it literally started with third eyes. So, you know, in the center chakra and all that. And then um, what I noticed is that when I would do three quarter view faces, the third eye in the center of the forehead looked kind of weird. Um, so then I just started moving, the eyes started to kind of migrate around the face. And, um, and then I realized that if I place one eye directly below another eye and I make sure to paint them very similarly, it creates a doubling that when people see it like just in passing, they don't quite 
pick it up. They might think that it's actually their own vision that's being distorted. And what that really does is it, is it then forces them to come up closer to verify what, what they're seeing. And, you know, I like the idea of having a piece of art that draws people in. Um, you know, I like to make sure that my pieces are very detailed so that once you get up very close, there's new stuff to see that you didn't see from far away. Um, I think it's very important for a piece of art to read from any distance. So if you're a couple inches away, there should be really interesting detail. If you're across the street, it should read as a bold kind of, you know, color and uh, visual stroke. I also love the symbolism with the masks that you're doing and how that's really about doubled identity. And that goes back to the eyes too. It seems like there's a lot of dualities yeah. and maybe surrealism. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> you know, one of the things for me, like, I don't buy into a lot of different philosophies or beliefs, but one thing that I absolutely believe in is balance. I think that um, there's a reason why like the yin yang symbol is one of the oldest, most ancient kind of symbols of what whatever this is, whatever the universe is, and um, that there is a, a, a balance that is there whether you see it or not, whether you acknowledge it or not. In a certain way, n things can never be out of balance. It's the nature of the universe to, to balance itself. And so I like to bring a lot of those themes into my work with dualities and things like that. And maybe there's power in both flying and falling. Yes, absolutely.